Mr Speaker. I call Fletcher Tabuto. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm proud to stand on behalf of New Zealand First to actually support this bill, although I appreciate much of what has been said in the House by our previous Speaker. Uh, it was certainly a bit rich to note the Minister blames Shell uh, for this uh, um, problem that uh, seems to need government legislation. It's uh, unusual to see uh, uh, the government uh, um, blame business uh, or uh, um, <laughs> not take uh, the benefit of good business upon themselves. Uh, Mr Speaker, this bill continues to highlight this government's uh, brilliant management of legislation. I know National is always keen to fix the heck out of a problem that doesn't need fixing or conversely do nothing when urgency is needed. And this bill just adds to the litany of issues that this government needs to face up to. The Statute amendment, uh, Statutes Amendment Act debated uh, just this week was another prime example of uh, 34 or was it 33 pieces of legislation that needed minor corrections. I uh, question the number because the Minister himself wasn't sure how many bills were affected by the amendment. Sir, so this bill, bill seeks to rectify uh, an oversight on the part of this government that they should have seen coming. There certainly is no two ways about it. It has already happened once before, Sir, 37 pages of amendments previously, as noted by a previous speaker. The purpose of this legislation is to allow existing petroleum uh, operators who have applied for a marine consent, that is, consent under the new EEZ legislation, to continue to operate their core business. To continue to operate, even though there was no way they can do that, under this current configuration of legislation uh, now in front of us. It is an artificial time constraint and it is interesting to note uh, that in the legislation there was uh, no uh, contingency, no um, clause that gave uh, these companies the opportunity to transition into this new legislation. So for me, I wonder if this kind of fix-up is an example of what we'll see uh, with, for example, uh, TPPA negotiations. I mean, we won't even we, we don't have the privilege now of debating it as a uh, as a house. Uh, it's certainly not being consulted publicly, and uh, we don't even get to discuss it for four years. It's an example. Uh, well, I use this as an example of a forewarning for um, this government to please focus on getting legislation right, negotiation right, um, so that uh, the New Zealand public can uh, have trust in a government. There was trust in a government, but it's been slowly eroded uh, over the past uh, six years, sir. Uh, trust is hard earned, but it is certainly harder to maintain. So it has been categorically stated by the Minister that this bill will not seek to change the requirements for existing petroleum operators to transition into the EEZ Act regime though the, uh, through the marine consenting process. Dr Smith, as I understand it, has ruled out the possibility of more and different tweaking of the Act. Uh, one risk is that this legislation, this amendment, uh, could see rise to changes made to it uh, later through this process. New Zealand First is critically aware that this opportunity has now been opened and uh, we are uh, strongly, uh, vehemently uh, wording uh, a warning to the Minister that they please uh, confine themselves to the issues raised uh, uh, in this legislation as the fix that they present it to be. Uh, there is high public interest in the balance struck. Um, out in our oceans between exploration and uh, protection. The obligation to protect and preserve is always paramount. New Zealand First believes we should be able to take energy, also fish, minerals, uh, resources from our oceans. But New Zealand First always also believes that we must have regard for their protection, sir. And the precautionary principle that is actually underlining the new um, EEZ Act so in short, if the government did now wish to revisit the balance that it struck in the law of 2012, at the very least we need insurance of full consideration, public submission and proper democratic parliamentary process, not something slipped into the House and rushed through like the countering terrorism fighters legislation late last year. 
Sir, I have made note publicly that Minister Bridges' decision to give permits for oil exploration rights in our marine reserves was anathema. And along a similar vein, after speaking and consulting with the public on this particular bill, uh, two cases uh, that failed just recently were not really about environmental or economic uh, balance. They were about applicants uh, pro proposing some quite novel ideas where a lot was at stake environmentally and being unable to satisfy the EPA that they've done the necessary homework. Those two cases, at this stage anyway, uh, have suggested to New Zealand First that the current law is doing its job and there is no need to use this as an opportunity to rewrite legislation when a promise has been made to this House that it is simply a fixer. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First supports the reasoning for this necessity. No public consultation has been entered, entered into, as noted by the previous speaker, um, except, of course, uh, consultation with the one effective party, that is, who obviously supports this bill. But it, it is important to note why New Zealand First will support it, uh, this bill today uh, through to uh, the next stage, because uh, this is a transitional uh, provision under section 162 and we speak of the end of June 2015 being the date where there's a real risk that the STOS or STOS will be in breach of the EEZ Act if it continues operating beyond uh, 27th of June of this year. Without that consent it will have to cease uh, its operations uh, of the Maui field. Uh, it's been noted, but I would add New Zealand First's uh, point of view uh, to this conversation, just how significant this is. Stoss's um, Maui operations contribute about 20 to 26 per cent of New Zealand's uh, gas supply, employs more than 300 personnel, which of course is a significant contribution to the Taranaki uh, financial wellbeing, and a five-day shutdown in 2011 due to an outage at Maui uh, gave us a real calculation of approximately $40 million a day gross cost to the New Zealand public. This bill, as it is read, will only allow current lawful petroleum activities to transition into the new regulatory regime without breaking requirements of the EEZ Act. Therefore, international obligations do not uh, directly apply to this bill, thankfully. Sir, I'm sure it was never the intention of this government uh, to deliberately or even inadvertently put operators transitioning into the EEZ regime at risk of breaching the relevant requirements of the Act. Therefore, with our warnings to the Minister about the process we are about to enter, enter into, uh, with the, the warnings that we have been told this is a fix-up and not an opportunity to rewrite legislation, uh, New Zealand First will support this uh, bill uh, through to the next stage because we cannot sit by and see core infrastructure collapse be because of poor government legislation. Thank you, Mr Speaker.